Lesson 8.3 deals with volcanoes and how they erupt. Uh, we know a volcano is just an opening in the surface of the, of the crust where magma uh, works its way, uh, magma gas and um, rock fragments work their way out of the um, inside of the earth. But um, this magma that we're talking about, well, that's our major uh, component to a volcano. Now, inside magma, there's something called silica. Uh, it's a compound, it's a mixture of silicon and oxygen. Well, that magma, or excuse me, that uh, silica is the thing that makes the volcanic uh, eruption either large or small, um, if it's flowing slow or if it moves really fast. It's kind of like the, um, uh, I, I always think of like silica, if something has high silica, it's kind of like a chocolate milkshake, a really thick milkshake where you turn it upside down and it doesn't pour out. It's just so full, it's so thick. Um, whereas uh, uh, something with low silica, well, that kind of runs more along the lines of like a chocolate milk. Um, it pours really f slow and very or very easily, and it flows very easily. Um, once that magma gets to the surface, it's called lava. Um, this little animation right here, shows uh, some different types of volcanic eruptions. So if a volcano, uh, the magma has low silica um, and it's a small eruption, uh, this is what it's going to, what kind of volcano it's going to create. It's going to create something called a cinder cone volcano. Uh, and you can read down here and I'll let it erupt. You can, very little pressure, comes up and it just kind of just shoots off to the sides and it kind of just builds up around the cone thus with all these little cinders, these little pieces of rock that shoot up and as they go up into the or magma that shoots up in the air. And as it goes up in the air, these little molten pieces of rock cool before they even hit and they become these cinders. Um, so that was a low silica small eruption. Um, let's look at a low silica large eruption and what kind of volcano is created here. Um, now this is called a shield volcano. A lot, little bit more pressure shoots up, but since it's low silica, it's just going to run off the sides, um, and this is going to make layer after layer after layer after layer, um, and you make this really wide, not very tall volcano like that. Um, if we go to the next one, the next type, um, we go with a medium to high silica content, a little bit thicker. Um, magma, but into a size, uh, a small size. You're looking at a composite volcano, smaller eruption. Um, just kind of notice small eruption, so it's not really shooting out. It's thick, so it's going to be moving really slow down the side. If you notice, it's moving really slow. So it takes a little bit longer for the pressure to be released. And um, Eventually, it dies off, and the ash and everything fall down to the side, and they become part of the side of the mountain as well. Um, but that's a high, medium to high silica and a small eruption. And um, the one that most people like and most people think about are the medium to high and large scale eruption. Um, now, that one is a composite, but this is a major eruption. Mount St. Helens was one of those examples. Um, I recall this when I was a kid, uh, about your age, when this erupted, and I was amazed by how much damage it got. You could actually see the top third of the mountain, which was all the way up here, was gone, and this whole side of it was gone, and it shot all the way over to the side. Uh, but lots of pressure, and it, <laughs> you can see it just blows out most of the side of the mountain. And since it's thicker content um, of silica, it still moves very slowly. The magma doesn't flow very fast. It's very slow, and it just makes layer after layer. And it takes longer and longer for that pressure to, uh, to go down. If you, like I mentioned before, it's kind of like a milkshake. If you try to blow a bubble in chocolate milk, um, no problem uh, with a straw. But if you try to put and uh, blow a bubble in a chocolate milkshake, um, that's where you run into a problem because uh, it's so thick and the gases get trapped in there and, it, and eventually it has to, it tears apart. Um, so 
um, those things, those gases being built up are, are quite dangerous. Um, we talked about, or you read about something called a pyroclastic flow. Um, that's just that big wa um, wall of ash and clouds and, and rocks that stay near the uh, ground of the volcano and it moves down the hill hundreds of miles per hour. So um, one of the uh, most important things to remember about volcanoes is that they do most of them along those tectonic plate boundaries. It's where those plates are sinking underneath each other, an oceanic plate is sinking under another oceanic plate or a, a continental plate. Uh, they're found near these subduction zones where the, the rock sinks under, melts, and forms all this magma. If you remember the ring of fire that we talked about uh, around the Pacific Ocean, that's where most of uh, volcanoes in the world are located. Uh, and you can kind of see them dotted off in, in red around here. Yeah, notice Iceland's got a lot. Um, but when they do make um, volcanoes, there's different kinds. There's a shield volcano. Those are um, broad. They're wider and they're flatter. Um, and this is kind of an example that you would see with a shield volcano. Um, you notice uh, there's eruptions off to the sides, central vents in the middle, but it's not really tall. And it's not, but it's really wide. Um, you have a cinder cone volcano. You notice here, the cinders just pop out and they land real close to the center part, the central vent here, and just builds up layers upon layers. They have steep sides, but it's relatively small um, and they're not active very long. Um, it's rich uh, in gas. There's lots of gas in there. Uh, that's what's the, the power, the force that shoots all these little cinders out um, is the gas that gets trapped in the lava. And it's kind of like, like I said, said before, trying to blow bubbles in a chocolate milkshake. Uh, you can do it, and when one does actually reach the surface, it does splat. Um, and then the last type um, is a composite. It's kind of a combination of both of those. Um, the uh, composite volcano, it's steep on the top, it flattens out on the bottom. Um, it gives, it's pretty strong, it's a pretty solid volcano because the lava hardens um, at the base uh, and it can grow larger, but you can see here, you know, this one is quite a bit taller. Um, magma chamber down here, the magma pipe here, a vent off to the sides, these are different layers. And the crater is right up on the top there. Um, composite volcanoes usually have violent uh, eruptions. And there's two reasons. Uh, the expanding gases uh, get trapped. And they, they eventually they work their way out. It's like shaking up a bottle of soda. Uh, if you open the top, eventually that gas wants to try to get out. Uh, and it will. Um, and then another thing is that since the lava hardened earlier from, uh, from excuse me, hardened from earlier eruptions, the openings that were there kind of get plugged up like a stopper, like a cork in a bottle. And um, eventually the pressure builds up and the pressure builds up and the pressure builds up. And the magma down below pushes out that plug. And um, that's what causes that major violent type of eruption. Um, like in Mount St. Helens, example. Um, we watch, scientists watch volcanoes. Um, they warn people. Um, they, they monitor them all day long, all night long. They look for uh, certain volcanoes that are going to erupt. Uh, they can do uh, some predictions. They, can, they, can, they can't predict exactly when and where all, just like in earthquakes, you can't predict when and where all volcanoes are, are going to erupt, but um, we do monitor them. So. Um, and I think that's it for 8.2. Um, some review questions you might want to look at and see if you can uh, remember the answers to. Um, where are most of those volcanoes located and why are they located there? Um, how do or how does the tip the type of material erupting determine the shape of the volcano? Does it 
you know, what type of material is it high um, silica content or, or low silica content, um, lots of gas, no gas. Um, what do scientists examine uh, when monitoring volcanoes? You know, do they, well, I don't think we talked about that one, but uh, th it was more along the lines of, you know, they look for little earthquakes, they look for the ground swelling, they look for the temperature in the ground to go up, uh, showing that the magma is moving. Um, so keep that in mind. How do the three types of volcanoes differ? We talked about those guys. And what are two ways uh, volcanic ash can get deposited many kilometers away? We didn't talk about that one, but as volcanoes erupt, they send that cloud of ash up into the sky. And um, wind will catch that. Rain will catch that. It'll end up in rivers. It'll end up on lakes. Even a small amount of, of ash can make water undrinkable. Uh, and ash is really heavy, too. So... Um, just a small amount. You think it looks like snow, but uh, even you know, five, six inches of it would weigh a very, very uh, a lot, uh, and it could cause damage to homes. Um, so that is it. So good luck. Uh, keep working hard on the, the packet, and that's it.